you messed it up. You're stupid. And today's daily dose of stupid, there is a new professor at Auburn, and this is one of the greatest stories I've ever done for a daily dose of stupid. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this one. I laughed at this one probably for, for 10 minutes off and on. Uh, there's a new professor there named Jesse A. Goldberg. He's a doctor and a, a lecturer at Auburn University. He's new to the Auburn family. And you can, and you all know how much I love Auburn. I am an alumna, or not an alumna, that's female. Uh, no, wait, alumnus, yeah, that's it. I'm an alumnus of Auburn. See, that's, that's something I learned at Auburn. Uh, maybe I should have spent a little more time studying because it took me a second to come up with it. But uh, I'm an alumnus of Auburn. I've uh, always been an Auburn fan. My dad went to Auburn. He graduated from there just like I did. And so I love my Auburn Tigers. I love my university. But this guy, man, he's just, he's not got it together. Uh, this is a new English professor there at Auburn. And you, you've got to see this tweet that he posted earlier. Uh, here we go. You can see this. So this is Professor Jesse A. Goldberg. And he says, My first controversial tweet as a member of Auburn University faculty. I know it's just a mascot, but I'm never going to call myself a War Eagle or say, Go War Eagles. Sorry. Oh, gosh. There's just... There's so much wrong with that on so many levels. First of all, he has since deleted that tweet, so apparently it was way too controversial for him originally. Uh, <laughs> first of all, War Eagle is our war cry. It's not our mascot. It's never been our mascot. And so he's calling it a mascot. We're not the Eagles. We have an Eagle, but we're not the War Eagles. We're the Tigers. And nobody ever says, Go War Eagles. They say, Go Tigers. Uh, so, first of all, he's wrong on even that. Like, he, even if you take any of the political stuff out of it, he doesn't seem to even understand that. What's really funny is the rationale he gave. And by the way, that tweet has since been deleted. But luckily, I got a, a screen grab of it beforehand. <laughs> the funny thing is, he doesn't want to say War Eagle or say Go War Eagles, according to his own words, because it has the word war in it. That's his explanation. <laughs> Apparently, uh, he's one of the Knights of Knee from Monty Python on the Holy Grail. You remember that they, they could not hear the word it. And so every time someone would say it, they'd go, Oh, we cannot hear the word. Th that's this guy. That apparently the, 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 the word war is a dirty word and he can't hear it anymore. I do think it's really funny how people on the left talk about Christians and, and people with conservative values as being a bunch of prudes. And, uh, the, you know, the, the don't cuss or that kind of thing. But then a word like war, they act like the biggest school marm in the world by <laughs> just refusing to even hear the word or say it. They get triggered the second they hear it and they would they they, you know, take painstaking links to go to to not say it. Look, War Eagle just is a battle cry for people that were going to be playing on the football field or the baseball field or the basketball court or the volleyball court or whatever else sport that we're playing. Believe me, I went to basically all of them when I was a student at Auburn. Uh, that's all it is. It's harmless. Nobody is advocating for war by saying War Eagle. I mean, it's, it's not like uh, everybody at the game gets their shaker up and goes, War Eagle. Bomberan! That's not a thing that happens. <laughs> Nobody, even if they're the biggest war hawk in the world, actually thinks that that's what they mean by saying War Eagle. Uh, this guy, the, the best response to this was somebody, uh, another person, a member of the Auburn family that responded to it. I think she may actually be in the English department, a graduate of Auburn as well. This lady named Rachel P. Bless his heart. <laughs> I mean, that's really all you have to say, right? Bless his heart. It's the perfect Southern comeback to that. But <laughs> the, 
by the way, th- that lady, uh, actually not somebody that is on the right, not somebody that's a conservative or a, a Christian, not somebody like me that's just shaking her head and laughing at how dumb this is. Her, if you look at her, her Twitter profile, one of the things on her profile bio is hashtag war in 2020. So she's not exactly a Christian conservative that, that caucuses with the GOP here in Alabama. <laughs> Even the liberals are looking at this and like, man, that guy stepped in it. But I guess because this guy is an English professor, this is just, I don't know, par for the course. If you've ever been around either the education department at Auburn or the English department, with a handful of rare exceptions, they're all a bunch of fruitcakes. I mean, I, I've since I was, I'd never majored in ag ed, but I was always hanging around the ag ed people. I had a lot of friends that were ag ed. I had a lot of friends that were... Uh, education majors and other facets. I had some fraternity brothers that were in that line of work. Uh, And and they'll all tell you the same thing. They're all a bunch of fruitcakes. And some of the English professors like this guy, this is a a pretty good sampling of that. Uh, I love his Twitter bio, by the way. If you look at the professor's bio, it says, lecturer at Auburn University, black studies, critical prison studies, queer theory, and American literature. (laughs) Now, to illustrate why this is so incredibly ridiculous, I got to show you this. This is a picture of Professor Goldberg, and I'm sure that you could probably guess this based on his last name. I'm guessing he's he's probably of Jewish descent in some way, which, I mean, I don't care. But this is a picture of, of Dr. Goldberg. That is the whitest dude I have ever seen. I mean, he may not actually be white. He may actually be Jewish, but he certainly looks white. But think about the resume that I just laid out for you. Black studies and critical prison studies. (laughs) Does that dude look like he knows anything about prison or being black? I'm going to go with a pretty solid no. And maybe that's why he studied it, because he didn't know anything about it. Queer theory, now that I believe, he might actually have some firsthand information on that one (laughs) that we're not aware of. That one I have no trouble believing. But black, (laughs) the fact that he's the professor of black black studies and critical prison studies. (laughs) Have you ever seen the Black Jeopardy sketch from Saturday Night Live? There's one where they have Louis C.K. on, uh, and he's a he's the African American history professor from BYU. <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, the show's about to end. After we wrap up here, go check out that sketch. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, but <laughs> the fact that this guy is the black studies and prison studies professor. I don't know. It's just that's that's too much for me. I can't get over it. Uh, th- this guy is just a bundle of hilarity on a number of levels, and I think the best thing is because we've all had fun with this with, with this guy being triggered by the word war and not being able to and and the fact that he's a, a lecturer of of black studies and prison studies, but ultimately. I did want to dig into this because there was a a quote that explained what he meant by abolitionist. Because you'll notice at the end of that Twitter bio, he says that he's an abolitionist. Well, he actually does explain what that means. And it's, it's quite entertaining as well. You can check this quote out from the professor. And it says there, the difference, or sorry, I'll look at the underlined part there. Not so much the abolition of prisons, but the abolition of a society that could have prisons, that could have slavery, that could have the wage, and therefore not abolition as the elimination of anything, but abolition as the founding of a new society. So, I don't know how militant this guy is. I don't know a whole lot about him other than what the information that I've just given you. But it sounds like the guy is a utopianist. In other words, he's one of these people that has just absolutely bought in hook, line, and sinker with the idea that government can somehow engineer and structure society and make it perfect to where people don't do bad things anymore. And that really is a pretty common, ridiculous as it is, a pretty common belief on the left. 
that the only reason people are bad, they basically all start out good. And the only reason people ever go bad is because somehow society corrupts them. Which, A, begs the question, well, how did the first person become corrupted? That doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would the first person be corrupt in the first place if, you know, you, you already had that? And, and the second part of that is there have been countless people that have tried, and normally what happens is things like crime and slavery and an abridgment of freedom actually go up. So I don't understand what that's talking about. He's saying that there should be no society where a prison could even exist. Well, you're not going to create a crime-free society. That's just never going to happen. We can mitigate crime as much as we can. But the only place where crime would be virtually impossible is somewhere like China, where there's a camera everywhere, where it's almost impossible to commit a crime because they are going to know exactly who you are and where you are, and they track all of their citizens like their cattle. So, yeah, you could theoretically abolish and create a, a society where uh, prisons didn't exist because everybody was so afraid that the state would destroy them if a crime were to take place. But the thing is, even over there, they do actually have people in prisons. In fact, they even have prison camps for Muslims and Christians and pretty much any other religious person and people that just speak out against the government and criticize them. Is that really the society you want? Because that's the society that it sounds like you're trying to drive at. I mean, granted, they don't get rid of prisons completely because, like I said, they have, you know, for example, Muslims and, and Christians and, and gay people also in those camps. So they didn't eliminate prisons entirely, but that's what China was trying to do by creating that society. It's not going to work because ultimately it doesn't address the real problem. Why do people steal? Why do people commit property crimes? Why do people hurt one another? It's because of the evil intent in men's hearts. No society, no government can ever make that not a reality. Human beings are going to be human beings. Human beings are always going to be imperfect, and because of that, society is always going to be imperfect. Even the best society that you could come up with, even the society that I hearken back to, uh, you know, in the, the 1790s, uh, a time where we had greatness to spare in our, our collective governing officials. You know what? Those guys had all kinds of problems. They were wildly imperfect. And I think that, you know, we're even more imperfect now, but the point is, it doesn't matter how good you get, it doesn't matter uh, how you craft your government, they're never going to be able to create a perfect society where there is an abolition of evil. That's just not going to happen. And the reason that, that crops up is because somebody has baptized their own mind in this secularist worldview that you can actually create a heaven on earth, that you can actually create some kind of utopia where bad things never happen to people. That's simply not true. It's not a possibility. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.